All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Appreciate you uh, all coming out today, as well as everybody who logged in on Zoom. I uh, stand up here today, and uh, I'm really pleased and really excited. And I'm pleased about the training camp that we had. I'm pleased about the way the guys are continuing to work day in and day out and attack this game plan. And I'm pleased with the player-led team that we are. And uh, so a lot to be happy about. I'm excited. I'm excited for this season that's in front of us. And I'm excited for this first game, uh, opening up in the historic Coliseum against the USC Trojans. So we've talked about a lot of things that have changed in our program this offseason. We've talked about uh, a lot of things, additions to our program, but we're in game week and uh, it's about time. So with that, I'll open up for any questions. I think I think they're as excited as I am. I think that's what you're going to see when two of our captains come up here and talk to talk to you today. I think everybody's in a great place mentally. I think everybody's fired up. I think everybody's excited for the opportunity to play this game with each other. And, uh, you know, you go back to the reasons I'm pleased. I'm pleased with the, the level that we're practicing at. I'm pleased with the intensity we're practicing at. And I'm pleased with the knowledge that our players have of our systems and the expertise that they have of our systems. And uh, so, again, everything's a lot of fun right now. And I think you ask them where they are mentally. I think they're going to tell you they're in a really good place. Training camp's not quite training camp anymore either. Like training camp is like, Training camp light, uh, but we made the most of it and they worked their butts off. And, you know, the NCAA gives you 25 days with a lot of different restrictions. And I think we made the most of those this year. It is. I, I think the D line is right where you would have expected him to be. You know, uh, obviously losing Elijah Garcia uh, to the NFL, that, that's a big loss. But you bring back guys like Trey Schumann, Ikena Chuku, Isaiah Floyd's playing at the highest level he ever, ever has. Blake Banish is a name that I think people will know by the end of the year. And oh, yeah, we bring back to Braylon Carroll. And that's really exciting. And so on top of that, at the rush position, you got KK Orgy and Joshua Piercy that are just playing really good football. Josh Piercy is taking another step. I feel like he's grown every year. And uh, I guess you can see how much his teammates respect what he's done by the fact that he was named our special teams captain a few uh, couple weeks ago. Coach, how do you care for the USC? Oh, there's going to be much better with the New coach, No, I think that's a great question. I think what we've chosen to do is, is we've gone with the approach that Lincoln certainly knows what he's going to run offensively. And uh, certainly with bringing Caleb there, there's probably a lot of familiarity when you hear them talk. There's a lot of comfort in that system. So that's why watching the Oklahoma offense is so good for us. You know, I mean, we have to see individual players from the USC team, the few that are returning and will be returning starters. Cause again, it's not just people from Oklahoma that came in, right? Like that's, uh, that's become a melting pot of college football. There's a lot of new faces. We think we've got a lot in our building. They've got a lot in their new building. And uh, so, Hey, uh, we'll see who rolls out there uh, on Saturday, I guess, if we don't get a depth chart before then and, and know who's going to be where, but right now for us, they're nameless and faceless. And, and what we're worried about is, is the schemes and understanding how we're supposed to fit things, how we're supposed to be where we need to be. And then when you look at their defense, you know, uh, me and coach Tui have played Alex Grinch a number of times. We know what his defense is. He's not going to get too far away from it. Like his thumbprint is pretty defined. He does a great job with movement. He does a great job with never letting things get out of control and, and outnumbered in the pass game. Like he's always want, always wants to be three over two in everything that he does in their uh, half quarter quarter system, however you call that coverage. And so he's not going to change much. So again, the best thing for us from game planning standpoints has mostly been Oklahoma. Now there's a couple superstars that have been added to that team that we certainly went back and watched their individual performances, their Blitnikoff performance years, and some of the things they do on special teams. But largely from a scheme standpoint, we're watching Oklahoma. What do you think is some of the interesting position matchups? Uh, I think both lines are going to be really interesting. You know, I think because I didn't complete my thought to your question. Like, I think our offensive line is the best it's ever been. So I'm not surprised by where that D line is, right? That D line, I think everybody thought would be there, but then you see what we've been able to do from an offensive line standpoint and the experience factor there. Uh, I think JP said a stat last night 
that uh, Shea Baker has played 2,784 snaps for the Rice Isles of college football. There's something like that. I think he's going to break 2,800 in this game. And it's like, holy cow, that's a lot of football. So I'm really glad to have the experiences of, of, of guys like Shea, guys like Isaac Klarkowski coming back and, and really full speed right now, and Clay Servin, as well as having Braden Nutter, who played a good bit for us last year. And then the experience at right tackle of uh, or inexperience is such a, a fun thing that we're learning through with Ethan Aniawa, as well as John Hughes, you know, coming in from West Virginia and, and battling for jobs. And, and John Hughes has played good, whether he's been at guard or at tackle. So, again, a pretty solid group there. So, yes, which matchups I think up front is going to be really fun to see on both sides of the football. And then, you know, our defensive secondary is going to be challenged. It's Lincoln Riley. It's Air Raid. It's all these great receivers and Caleb Williams. So there's going to be those challenges down the field. And the thing you can never sleep on with a Lincoln Riley offense is how well they run the counterplay, how, how, you know, you look up. And at the end of games, they've got 200 or 250 yards rushing. So it's a great challenge for our defense. Offensively, I think Coach Tui's put together an unbelievable plan with the staff. I, I think we're we're prepared to put people in great positions, and I think Wiley knows exactly where they're going to be and when they're going to be there. So, it's I, I think it's going to be a fun college football game to watch. How was his area different than some of the other? Is it pretty close, or it's off from Southern? Yeah, I think the commitment to running the football at times, and the fact that he will go to some different personnel groupings. He's not always going to be, you know. I think back in the day when we think air raid and think back to um, Leach at Texas Tech, it was all ten personnel. It was wideouts everywhere, and you're going to see Lincoln's number one personnel group is going to be 11 personnel and you will see things mix in there different formations sometimes it's tempo after a big play it's tempo but it's not always tempo so there's but there's certainly some some air raid purist thoughts in there when you see the y cross coming and some of those things i do not know lincoln well uh we've talked through the years on the recruiting trail a lot of respect for what he did at oklahoma um actually had called him for a friend back in 2013 or 2014 and offered him a job at a place where my hit, my friend was a head football coach. And uh, at that time he didn't take it. And I, I now know why. I mean, he was hired about a week later at Oklahoma as the OC and gosh, I don't know if he was even 30 years old. I mean, he was really, really young when he got that opportunity and did a great job with it. It certainly worked out well for him now. Correct. Yeah, he was at uh, at Wazoo and just did a great job. Really changed their culture defensively. It used to be a place that was going to score a lot of points. He went in there and made them believe and, and play really fast and physical. I know you talk a lot about the depth you have now in the team. You've got really good black teams that the offensive line is the best since you've been here. Can you talk about the other positions and how you feel for them? Yeah, I think the depth is is amazing. Uh, it's an amazing component because we feel good. You know, there were there were times we went into games where if somebody broke a shoestring, we'd want to call a timeout and sit there until we could get the thing repaired, right? Like we just didn't have people we could we could put in a game. And now, like literally at every position, you know, you have the old adage of a pair and a spare. So you have a couple couple tackles you believe in, whether it's offense or defense, and then another one that can go in at least one more. They can go in everywhere. And we've got receivers that we've just not had in the pro program that I think can stretch the field vertically and make contested catches over and over. So I think the depth everywhere has not only made us better on game day, I think it made us better throughout camp. You know, the old adage of iron sharpens iron. I think the way that some of our guys had to push and work. And I, I just think through human nature, it is hard to ever push yourself the way you can with the way competition does, you know, like coaches jobs are to push people to and through their limits, right. Put, take them someplace they could not or would not take themselves. But I think coaching certainly is easier when there's true competition and they look back and, and see somebody doing everything right. And, and it just makes you do that much more. It makes you prepare that much harder. Um, so competition is where it's at. And that depth has allowed us to have that competition. So I know as we talk about position groups, like I look out there and there's four running backs that are going to be ready to go in this game that we believe in. There's more fullbacks than we've ever had tight end wise. We've got Jack Bradley in there and, and he's doing some unbelievable things. We've moved Trey Phillippe there. Trey's doing a great job uh, right now. You know, you always saw it. I can't remember if you came out to any of the summer conditioning stuff at 6 a.m., but he was always leading those groups, you know, and you're like, gosh, this offensive tackle can really run. And now he's blocking and, and running routes out there in the throw game and looking like a true tight end. We talked about the receiver depth. 
Defensively, the D line, like you can roll eight dudes in there and feel great about it. Linebacker, we've got three or four uh, that are game ready right now with Myron Morrison jumping in there in the second half of this game. And the secondary, I mean, I think we're bringing six, seven safeties on the trip and six corners. And there's three or four corners that I don't know if anybody will know the difference. We've got guys that are playing at a really high level, like Sean Fresh. Um, but gosh, beyond that, you got Jordan Dunbar, who's playing really good. Lamont Narcisse is a different player than he's ever been. It's just a, a really fun group right now. I mean, on all phases. And that's what I think you see. You watch our seven on seven when we go against each other. And there's never like somebody just dominated a session. There's great plays on both sides. Same's true about nine on seven. And then we go to team. So, yeah, I don't know, Nate. I don't need to be up here and be all sunshine and roses. I'm just, I'm just excited and I'm happy. Anything else from here? All right, we'll open it up uh, for questions from the Zoom participants. Uh, all right, Bloom, uh, I wanted to ask you about openers. Uh, last couple of years here, uh, there was the Arkansas game, the Army game, the middle game, that y'all have kind of had a really good game plan in form of attack and kind of come out firing. What is it about the beginning of the season, that extra time to prepare, that you think your staff, your players uh, handle handle well or are ready? Yeah, I think uh... – Number one, I think the staff does an amazing job. I think in all three phases, our coordinators have given us great plans in those games. Uh, I think we've got brilliant coordinators. And I think when you give Brian Smith and Marcus Tuyasopo more time to work on you, uh, they're going to find things. And, and certainly we've had a lot of time to go back and, and look at these, these guys' body of work through their coaching careers this summer and watch a lot of football, a lot of Oklahoma football. And, um, you know, we feel like we've got a great plan in this one too. So uh, I think you got a bunch of coaches that love to work at this game. We're all football junkies. And so when you give us a challenge and all that time, and sometimes that time limit is shortened in a one week span. Uh, and that's the challenge that we presented to our team. You know, like I, I told them the other day, you know how you felt in week two of training camp where you lined up and you felt like you knew what was coming from the other side of the ball, be it by formation or this split or that, or this alignment on the defense. Well, now the challenge is you got to get that way for USC in a week and a half. You don't have two weeks like you do in training camp. And then the next week, we only get a week. And so it is understanding how rapidly everything happens in college football. But we want to put them in, in those positions where they can be successful and where they have great knowledge so they can make those fractional decisions and play the way we need them to play on Saturday. And then when it comes to other people scouting you, you talked a lot about the depth and the secondary. Uh, do you kind of feel like uh, – it's hard for anyone, anybody else to get a picture on, on who and how y'all can line up and do things because this is going to be the first time y'all have had, you know, all of those pieces there and as experienced as you've been. It feels like this is a, the same group, but it's almost a different group. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, I don't think anybody has any idea what our team looks like right now. If they haven't been to our practices, if they haven't watched our scrimmages, I don't know if they realize what a – a healthy Wiley Green and a healthy George Nyakwal means to this football team. And then you bring up Braylon Carroll, who missed the entire season last year. You bring up Bradley Rosner, who missed, you know, all but two quarters of last season. And, and we're different. And plus, we added some really cool, fun pieces. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if um, I, I guess I'm not going to worry about what they think or what they, they know, because uh, they'll get a chance to see this football team soon enough. Hi, Coach. I understand that week one is probably the most difficult film study of the year, but what is the added challenge when half of USC's offensive starters are coming in from all different schools and a good portion of their defensive starters are transfers as well? Well, at this point, the biggest challenge is putting together a depth chart to know like what numbers you expect to tell people to be where. We understand the schemes, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be really exciting. Uh, going out there in pregame and trying to jot down who's aligning at what position so we can tell people to be watching for this number to do X or this number to do Y. Uh, so in the modern era of uh, top secret documents, like that's, that's where we are. Unless you can get somebody to do a raid for me. Anything else from Will? All right, Coach, thanks. All right, thank you all. Wiley?
Uh, hey guys, uh, really excited to start this 2022 season off. Um, obviously a fun first game and we're ready to get to it. Right. Uh, the well, I'll tell you what I don't see, and it's a lot of defensive linemen's hands in my face. And I'm pretty sure my teammates will get a little riled up with that, but you know, they've done such a great job uh, this fall camp. You know, Shea Baker's another one of those captains that's really steps up on the offensive line. And, you know, you got veterans coming back with Clarkie and with Clay who are just really taking another role and another step in their development. And, I mean, those guys have been phenomenal. But then you you keep looking across and, you know, Braden Nutter's going to be absolutely awesome. He's a grimy kind of player who's just going to keep giving it for you every single play. And then Ethan and John at tackle, like, you just you can't get enough of those guys and appreciate everything they do for us. And they've been absolutely awesome. <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't know if I can name all the weapons we have going for us this year because it's uh, it's it's plenty deep. Um, but you know we've gotten a lot of work over this fall camp over summer, and um, I'm really excited to be able to go out and do it against a different team. Talk about that. I appreciate you want to be out here. Yeah, and having that the injury this past uh, you know this past year, it really helps you appreciate how much this game of football is and what it brings to you know my life and and people around me. Um, you know, I was blessed with the chance to come back and continue grad school here uh, from Coach Bloomgren and continue to play football. And like, there's not much more that you could say where you're able to get another great education. You know, I got a great degree here in economics and sport management. Now I get to continue doing that, get my MBA here. I mean, that alone is enough to bring somebody back, but to also get the chance to play football here, it's really special. And so when you get the chance to do that, especially coming off an injury, um, it, words can't describe how much it means to me and how excited I am to get back out on the field. How excited, though, are you to see this wide receiver room that you have? I mean, you've heard it all fall camp. It's It's been absolutely a blast to have those guys out there. They're explosive. They make great catches, you know. You know, I would like to say I throw the perfect ball every time, but, you know, it's football and I may not, but those guys go up and get it. Um, it's it's super exciting to see those guys out there. Um, another guy we want to mention is like Luke McCaffrey just goes back out there and, you know, plays a little bit of receiver and you can see his explosiveness. Um, so it's it's really exciting. And um, like you said, it's it's tough to describe how uh, how much it means to us to have those explosive guys on the edge and a great offensive line up front. And then you can't forget about the guys in the backfield. Like those guys are going to have some explosive plays this year. So. We're just ready to get the season going and play against somebody else. How did TJ push you? How'd you push TJ the offseason? Like Coach says, competition pushes everybody. Iron sharpens iron. Um, TJ is one of those guys that he's going to continue to work and be a grinder in every situation. And, you know, that pushes me to become, you know, more of that, right? It continues to push each other. Um, but while we push each other, we also help each other. And I think that's the great thing about, you know, TJ and I's relationship is, um, no matter who's going out there with the ones at the beginning of fall camp or how we're doing it, we're going to continue to push each other and help each other through reads, talking through things together. Um, I know all through this week, TJ has been, we've been talking things out with each other. We watched some film together. So it's always nice to continue to have that competition and keep pushing each other. Holding up with the uh, USC on the road. I'm just excited to talk about it. Yeah, uh, anytime you get the chance to open up a season, it's exciting, but especially when you get to do it against USC. Uh, last year, got to do it against Arkansas, two, you know, three years before that at Army. It's always cool when you get the chance to open it at a cool place, uh, such as those three, and um, USC is going to be another spot where you get to go out and get to play, play a good game and hopefully surprise some people. All right, we'll take questions uh, from Matthew and Steve. Wiley, uh, like Bloom said, this is a, there's a certain amount of this team that that nobody really knows because they haven't had all the pieces uh, assembled yet. Uh, how would you describe this offense uh, going into USC this weekend? What's it like? Um, well, like you said, it might be hard to describe because we're at a point where we've got weapons all over the field. 
Uh, we can put, really put anybody in from the ones and the twos in that depth. Uh, we can rotate guys in and be confident that we, you know we're going to get an explosive play. Um, you know, Kobe Campbell is one of those guys that you throw him in there, you, you better be sure you know where he is because he's going to explode off the ball and go make a play somewhere. So as we continue to grow in our game and as a team and continue that relationship uh, with each other, like you'll be able to see some of the explosiveness that we have on the field. And hopefully we'll be able to kind of showcase that through, the, through this game. And then started a, a couple openers. Now you go back to Army or, or Arkansas, you know, some, some big names in, in college football. You've gone out there and you haven't really seemed phased. Uh, what is it that you uh, can kind of ignore the, the logo on the other helmet and just go out there? Do you kind of feel like you got something to prove or uh, it's just another game? What is it? Well, football is football. Uh, no matter who you're playing up against, um, it's always fun to go out there and play against somebody. So, you know, whether it's at Arkansas, whether it's at Army, whether it's at USC, um, it's always a really cool experience to get to do those things. And being the first game of the season, like you just got to lock in and be prepared for it, uh, no matter where it's at. And I know it's going to be loud. It's going to be a fun time there. But once the game starts and that first snap is held, like it's football. So we're going to be excited to go out and play it. And I think that's my mentality going into it is be ready to go play some football, no matter where it is. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'll start off by saying um, it was pretty tough uh, how I went out uh, in 2021 with the season and the injury and pretty much career and the injury at that point. But um, whenever I got the call last December from uh, Coach Bloom about how I was able to get another season, there was so much excitement. And uh, Christmas pretty much came early because I was like the 21st or the 22nd of December. But um, yeah, uh, looking forward to right now, we're just really excited to play someone else and uh, get the ball rolling and just, just start making plays, honestly. Um, yeah, I think this will definitely be a challenge for us, uh, especially defensively, but, um, uh, you, you've, you've seen the guys play last year. I mean, Caleb Williams, you know, you've seen him, you know about him, uh, Braylon Addison, uh, from, uh, transferring from Pitt, you've seen him as well. And so it's just, um, It'll be a challenge being on the field, but as far as like uh, personnel and scouting, um, it's pretty much all the same. Uh, the same way you break down the film for anyone else uh, going forward in the season is the same way you'll break them down uh, in week one. And so it's just about, it'll really just come down to technique and executing. Um, even though they have the stars, um, everyone's beatable. Getting more pumped up though when you're going to go against a receiver like that pimp transfer, he's as good as they get. Oh, yes, sir. Um, yeah, like you said, he's as good as they get. But um, I know we've got the guys in our room to lock them down and do what we have to do to win. Because um, I believe in every single one of us in our room. Uh, I trust our two deep uh, with without a doubt. And so it just come down to execution and playing technique uh, for 60 minutes. And we should we should come out with a result that we that we like. What is it about Addis that is impressive? Obviously, that's receiver in the nation last year. What have you seen? Um, I think he does a good job of coming off the ball and does a good job of with 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 his releases. Um, uh, he's he's fast, he's quick. Um, but I know we've got guys like Gabe Taylor who look for challenges like that. Um, and me myself uh, look forward to challenges like this. Um, but. Like I said, everyone's beatable, and it'll just come down to uh, just us playing our best ball. And, uh, you know, he's going to make plays, um, but it's on us to respond and uh, keep keep the ship steered the right way and uh, just finishing in the fourth quarter. Talk about this 
secondary season, as opposed to what you played about down. Um, this is probably the best secondary I've been in since I've been here, honestly. Um, the talent level is through the roof. Um, guys are hungry, they're feisty, they're physical. They make the plays that come to them. They do their job. Um, they celebrate with their teammates. They talk smack when it's appropriate, and they just make plays all over the field. And it's really exciting having guys like Gabe Taylor, Sean Fresh, Jordan Dunbar, Lamont Narcisse. Play wide, Kirk Lockhart, um, Treshawn Chamberlain, who can, who's coming back as well. Um, yeah, just all over the field. It, we've got we've got ball players, and we're ready to ball. Remember, this is your third season to start. This will be fourth opening start. Yeah. yeah. How growing up a lot football and off the field. How do you feel going into this? Um, I feel a lot more confident, not only in myself, but in the team as well. Um, we're, we're a lot closer. We're a lot better. We're much more physical. We're much more experienced. And we're just ready ready to start just hitting people all over the field and uh, making the plays that come to us, really. Um, whether that's getting in the box offensively or defensively stopping them from getting in the box. Oh, yeah. Um, I think injuries really make you appreciate what this game gives and takes from you. Um, but um, I, I'd be wrong if I didn't shout out Coach Hans and his staff for not only developing us, but uh, with things like injury maintenance and uh, rehab as well. Um, the training room staff as well, uh, with D Doheny uh in the training room. Um, but yeah, it's it's a player led team, and so we hold each other accountable in order to maintain and uh get better. And as like Coach Bloom alluded to, uh the competition always brings out the best in each other. And so um just pushing each other has helped us uh get bigger, faster, and stronger during the summer and during fall camp. Okay, we'll take questions uh, from Zoom. Uh, hey, George, what's something that you think the defense it, it does particularly well that, that's going to surprise some people this weekend? Um, I think our defense does a good job up front, especially of wreaking havoc. We got guys like Trey Schumann, Ikenna, um, DeBraylin, Blake, um, uh, Josh Piercy, KK, just uh, wreaking havoc up front so our linebackers can flow freely and make plays down here, and so our safeties can too. And uh, our corners also do a good job of filling as well, and so we're really good against the run. Um, we're good against the pass as well too as far as getting pressure up front and uh, covering guys for however long it takes, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seconds at a time. Um, and so it'll really just come down to uh, playing technique and executing and um, I think we've done a lot better job of that through the years. And so now it's it's really time to do it against someone else, which I'm really excited for. And then this is your your fourth opening day, but the, a lot of folks making uh, maybe first, second uh, starts on, on this defense this weekend. What have you seen uh, from the young guys, you know, your your, your Gabe Taylors, your, your Jordan Dunbar's, your Sean Freshes? What have you seen from those young guys through camp uh, that makes you excited? How have they grown? Um, so with those guys that you named, they really don't, I really don't see them have nerves, honestly. They're, they're here to play football and that's, that's what they do. Um, so we get a challenge like this. We don't, we don't shy away from them. We're going uh, head first into it and ready to play ball. Um, but yeah, they're, they're really excited and I'm really excited as well um, to see them make plays and to celebrate with them when they do. And so, um, yeah, the the inexperience, um, the inexperience that we have um, is really more um, is really more just not being in the game. But they they know that they're ready for moments like this, and so we're not worried about anything. We're just ready to play ball. Uh, 